I'm going to manage Arsenal for the next 10 years with the goal of bringing back their glory days. But it's not going to be easy because even a manager as good as Mikel Arteta has failed to get them over the line. And just look at the challenges we've got. Winning 25 trophies, including three Champions Leagues, winning a treble, going invincible, and having a Ballon d'Or winner. We need to do this all within the next 10 seasons. I mean, this is a club that hasn't even won a single Champions League in their history. This might be the most difficult 10 season job we've ever taken. Here we go, our first year as Arsenal boss, and I think we need to thank Mikel Arteta, because he's given us a fantastic foundation to work with. Players like Martin Erdegaard and Bukayo Saka, Declan Rice, and even Saliba at the back. The talent is there. If we make a few signings here and there, bring in some world-class talent, I reckon we could get Arsenal to Premier League and Champions League glory. But it's never going to be so easy. 131 million in the bank, and I would love to spend all of that. But don't forget the wheel of career mode. Every season it's going to give us a challenge. And what's it going to give us for the first season? Transfer budget has been halved. Brilliant. That's that's just the start we needed. Yep, that's absolutely fantastic. We're competing with oil money clubs like Manchester City. And we're going to have to do that with our budget being halved down to 65 million. But hey, can't complain. We need to do our job and improve this team as much as we can. To start with, the weakest point of this team right now, I think is Zinchenko. He's just 81 rated absolutely no pace he's gonna get rinsed and i mean theo hernandez could be absolutely amazing uh but how do we afford him with just 65 million okay maybe if we do a swap deal i don't mind putting someone like Jorginho in this deal and let's see if that works we'll chuck in another 35 million as well nope. <laughs> they don't want Jorginho. why am i not surprised okay what if we put zinchenko in this deal and another 40 million and that's more like it they've accepted it the wheel gun stop us from making improvements Theo Hernandez is our first signing for Arsenal. If we're going to win 25 trophies over the next decade, we're going to need a left back like Theo Hernandez. But I think we're going to need more improvements too. One thing I'm going to do is make Ramsdale our starting keeper. One reason Raya is on loan. I know Mikel Arteta loves this guy, but I kind of want to revive Ramsdale's career. So we're going to see if that happens. We still have 22 million left for this first season. And I'm not happy with that midfield. I don't think Jorginho can really carry that midfield. And we don't have anyone decent on the bench to play there. We're gonna have to figure something out. Do you know what? It might require selling a couple of players. And to start with, Fabio Vieira has been sold to Newcastle, by the way. We'll take the 18 million. Offer from Barcelona for Martinelli. No, no, no. That's not a way we're gonna raise funds. And here's the big one. Jorginho has been sold to Juventus for a massive 31 million. What on earth are they thinking? In spite of the wheel trying to ruin everything, we've now got a budget of 73 million and i think we can get a really good midfielder i think i found the perfect midfielder for our team his first name's even Mikel. this looks like a match made in heaven if we can get this deal over the line okay i'm gonna start with 47 million i don't know why but let's see i have a feeling 47 might work okay it doesn't but i don't mind paying the extra couple of million in spite of our budget being half the sign up player like Mikel merino i think we've done a stellar job building this team now it's time to see if we can bring some silverware to London. Um, okay, this is not the start we wanted. Ooh. Losing the Community Shield final to City. Oh, and Man City even won the Carabao Cup. And they're probably gonna win the FA Cup. Bro, they're gonna be the biggest villains of this video. Yup, indeed. They managed to win the Premier League with a record 100 points. That is crazy. We finished second. Are we actually gonna go trophy less in the first season? Oh my days. Out of the Champions League. That is crazy. Okay, the good thing is we have reached the Europa League final, but it's against Bayern. Honestly, guys, I think we are going to go trophy less in the first season because beating Bayern Munich, I don't think there is any chance. Ah, oh, to make it worse, Harry Kane scored. I mean, I'm looking at this team. It's great to see Saka at a 90 overall, Martinelli going up massively too, Erdegaard at a 90, but still, it's the same story for Arsenal. So close, but yet so far. And that's the end of the first season, and we've made zero progress on our challenges. By the way, guys, today's video is sponsored by the world's biggest club. And no, I'm not talking about Real Madrid. It's S2GFC. That's right, boys. I'm sponsoring my own video. Because official S2G merch is out now. We've got the hoodies, a cheeky cap, the official club jersey, and a lot more. It just makes me feel so grateful that we've built such a big community that we're able to do this. Like, imagine having my own hoodie. Like, how crazy is that? And I'd really appreciate
appreciate if you guys could show your support by getting yourself some merch. And also, we're going to be running a competition for the people who've bought the merch. And the prize is going to be something special. Stay tuned to find out more about that. But for now, links will be in the description. But you know what? For season two, our team's a lot better. The ratings are a lot higher. But hopefully, we'll get to keep our budget of 270 million to spend. It all kind of depends on the wheel. What's our challenge going to be? Oh, no. If you bottle the Premier League, your highest rated player is going to join the title winning club. That means if this season, somehow Man City win the league, whoever our highest rated player is, which in this case right now is Erdegaard, he'll be joining Manchester City. Okay, guys, we need to make sure this team is capable of winning at the Premier League. And honestly, I think that starts by bringing in a new striker. As good as Gabriel Jesus is, he's not a goal machine. And I want a goal machine in this team. And Colo Muani from PSG is the striker we're signing. I don't know if he's going to be an insane goal scorer, but he gives us a bit of a different option compared to Jesus. But yeah, he was expensive, 100 million. I mean, just look at this team that we've built. Apart from having an incredible first team, We've got depth as well. We cannot afford to lose the Premier League this season. I am scared to even check who's won the Premier League, but... What? Fifth? Out of the Champions League? What went wrong? Once again, Man City, of course, have won it. But this is horrendous. And you know what that means? Our highest rated player is about to join City. Now, the good thing for us is Erdegaard has gone up to a 91. And letting him go is a much better thing than letting Bukayo Saka go. I don't want him gone. Nah, man. This is a major setback. Martin Erdegaard is joining our biggest Premier League rivals. To be fair, we can't even blame the wheel for this. The wheel gave us a chance to win the Premier League, keep our best players, but we completely bottled it. I'm just hoping we at least won some trophies this season. Um, not the FA Cup, not the Carabao Cup either. At least this time in the Champions League, we got out of our group, knocking out Galatasaray and Atleti, but succumbing to Man City in the semi-finals. Man City have taken our best player and every trophy away from us. They're literally the biggest villains. I'm looking at the stats, boys, and Kolo Muani has had a bit of a stinker. What a flop signing. Saka and Martinelli are clearly just carrying this team. We're gonna have to figure something out, because this is clearly not working. Do you know what? We've lost one of our highest rated players. We've made zero progress with the challenges. Pains me to say this, but we need help from the wheel. Oh, okay. I think we are getting the help. Beat every top six club at least once in the Premier League, and you can upgrade any first team player to a 99 overall. This could be game changing. Okay, so basically in the Premier League this season, we need to beat Man City, Spurs, Liverpool, Chelsea, and Manchester United. Just a single win against all five of these teams. That'll count and we'll get that 99 overall upgrade. Okay, but first, let's use the 150 million that we've got and improve this team as much as we can. Do you know what? I hate to say this. We trusted you, Ramsdale, but you've not delivered in these past couple of seasons. I should have listen to Mikel Arteta. I think now it's time to replace him. And I think Gregor Kobel could prove to be a match winner. Okay, let's see if they'll be willing to take Aaron Ramsdale in a swap deal. And yup, they're willing to do that. Massive upgrade for season three. We've got a new goalkeeper. We still have about 100 million left. And I was thinking maybe replacing Kolo Muani could be really smart. But we just signed him and I know he's had a tough season. But look at that rating. He's 88 rated. He's bound to get some form back. But I do think replacing Kai Havertz for another German in Florian Wurz would be insane. Okay, yeah, I need to just put that plan completely out of bed. He's 91 rated and we just don't have the funds. I'm still gonna try because if I put Havertz in a swap deal here, maybe we can figure something out here by putting in like 90 million. Um, no, that is that is clearly not happening. I still want to try and sign Florian Wurz though because he's the kind of player that we need. Someone on Erdegaard's level, a cape replacement. Okay, we are generating a bit of money. 3.5 million for El Nini, but that's nowhere near enough. Now, that's much better. About 15 million for Enketia, and another 14 million for selling Nuno Tavares. Okay, now we're up to 131 million, and maybe a swap deal could work now. Okay, once again, we're gonna put Guy Havertz in the deal. This is literally proving to be one of the most difficult signings I've ever made in career mode. But now they don't want Havertz. I, I, I don't know if we can sign words. Guys, I've made a massive decision. Guy Havertz has been sold. 
62 million from Lazio. With that, we're up to 190 million. And we're going all in for words. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to go 150 million. It's just my first offer. This is getting insane. And wow, they straight up rejected it. One more player sale, boys. Emil Smithrow is gone as well. Surely we have enough for Florian words now. All right, I'm chucking in 170 million this time. We are not playing around. And they're willing to do a deal at 177. Let's just get this over the line. And yes, we've done it. Florian Wirtz to Arsenal is a done deal. Probably one of the most difficult transfers I've had to pull off in career mode. Oh my days, the team we've built. No excuses, man. We're gonna have to win trophies this season. But also, let's try and unlock that 99 rated player. Okay, we're facing our first top six club already in Manchester City. <sighs> we're starting off literally with the toughest possible opponents and we can't beat them. We're gonna get one more attempt, but it's gonna be tough. Come on, at least against Man United, we should be getting our first win against the top six club and there you go. And we're following that up with wins against Chelsea and even Liverpool. Okay, our North London rivals could ruin our party for us. Hopefully not. Let's get the win against Spurs as well. Oh, it's a draw. That's the first round of Premier League games done. We still need wins against both Spurs and City. All right, there you go. We've got it over the line against Spurs. It all comes down to this against Man City. If we win this, we're literally going to get a 99 rated player in our team. This would be huge. And yes, we get the win. Let's go, boys. We've been in every top six club this season. And time to claim our reward. Who do we make 99 rated in this squad? Do you know what? I kind of want to make Saka absolutely insane. Insane. And there you go. We've made him 99 rated. He's now going to win multiple Ballon d'Ors, which we need for the challenges, by the way. But also, I've got a feeling this season we might be winning a fair few trophies. And yes, guys, we finally won the Premier League. But wait a minute. Zero losses. We've just gone invincible. That is crazy. I didn't notice it at first because we only had 92 points. Looks like we just that bad in draws. But it's done. One of the most difficult challenges we've ended up completing first. I literally can't believe it. Let's also see if we can add some more trophies. No FA Cup. No Carabao Cup. <sighs> and don't forget, we're not in the Champions League this season. But we are in the Europa League and let's win this final. Come on, man. We need to start winning the trophies and there you go. Trophy number two with Arsenal. And that's what a 99 rated player can do. Just look at Saka. Our team now is absolutely ridiculous. We gotta keep the momentum going. By the way, if you're enjoying the content, I'd really appreciate if you could take a moment and subscribe to the channel. The wheel helped us out big time last season. Is it going to do the same? Oh, North London betrayal. A random first team player sells out and joins Spurs. Yikes. Just don't be Saka. Just don't be Saka. Oh my days, it was going to be. But in the end, it's Mikel Merino. And there you go. The traitor Mikel Merino to Spurs is a done deal. But you know what? Of all the players that could have left us, I don't mind Mikel Merino leaving. He's 30 years old anyways. But we need to get to work work and replace him. We do have 182 million, so that shouldn't be a problem. And Vitinha from PSG looks like the perfect choice. We still have about 100 million left, and maybe we could use that to replace Kolo Muani, because although he's 89 rated, he's not been scoring that often. If this season Kolo Muani can score over 25 goals, we'll keep him at the club. But that's the bare minimum we need. Wait a minute, guys. We've got an invite to the Ballon d'Or ceremony, and it's for star boy Bukai Osaka. I mean, he's 90 rated. Guided us to an invincible season. I'm not surprised he's taking home this award. But there you go. We've got a Ballon d'Or winner. We were invincible last season. All we need is to get trophies now. About trophies, we do pick up the Community Shield. Trophy number three. And the Premier League back-to-back. -back. This time, though, we weren't invincible. But it does count towards trophy number four. Oh my days, we won the Carabao Cup. Trophy number five. And that also means we're on course for a treble. I mean, talking about trebles, we have done the domestic Domestic treble winning the FA Cup. Trophy number six. We've won everything in England so far. All depends on the Champions League. Ah, oh, of course. It had to be freaking Man City. Winning the Champions League for Arsenal is it's gonna be a real, real challenge. Because that's something they've never done in their history. Do you know what? We've built a super team. We're gonna keep going and pull it off. All right, real. No funny business this season. Sell all strikers and play without a traditional nine for this season. Brilliant. And that means Kola Muani, he's gone. Sold him for 108 million. And also Gabriel Jesus, although it is arguable that he's not a traditional striker. But hey, he's a striker in game and we can't.
can't use any strikers this season. The good news is our budget's absolutely ridiculous with 379 million, but we're gonna have to figure out a formation without a striker or even a center forward. Both are not allowed. I guess we can have Wurtz playing in that position. For now, Sambi Lokonga in there. And yup, that is definitely much better. I don't know if we'll win big trophies with it, but if we sign a massive midfielder, I think this could work temporarily. You know what? Since we're not gonna have a striker, we're gonna need goals from everywhere and Fede Valverde could be that kind of a player. And since we've basically got 380 million, I think this signing should be a cakewalk to get done with. We've actually got Fede Valverde at Arsenal. Even with Valverde, I really don't know how we're gonna function without a striker. Okay, I can't believe this. Without a striker, we've rushed the Premier League. I mean, just look at the gap between us and Man City. That is trophy number seven. Oh, we lost the community shield and the Carabao Cup final too. No domestic trophies this season. Oh, that means we can't complete a treble even if we reach the Champions League final. And of course, we do reach the Champions League final. That is just brilliant. I'm actually curious. How did we even pull this off without a striker? Well, it's the perks of having a 99 rated player in Bukayo Saka Plus. But banged in quite a few goals from the camp position. Fair enough. But come on, man. It's time to get Arsenal's first ever Champions League. And yes... We've pulled it off five seasons in and we've made some solid progress. Two challenges completed. Eight trophies, one Champions League. I think with Arsenal, we can complete them all. Unless, of course, the wheel has some other plans for us. Well, this one's decent. Win versus Man City and we get to steal one of their players. Oh boy, have I wanted to get revenge from them for taking away Erdogan. And you know what? If you look at our team, we kind of are in need of a lot of squad depth. Plus, a new striker and you guys know who's the Man City striker that we can possibly steal. This could get really interesting. All right, first chance at stealing a Man City player and already my eyes are on Erling Haaland. Come on, let's see if we can beat them without a striker, by the way. And yup, we've managed to get the win. That is literally our striker problem solved because we've stolen Erling Haaland from them. Oh, and it does feel good to have a proper striker. That's how the team's gonna line up. But we're not done yet. We could still steal one more player from them. Am I seeing things or are they playing Rodri up top? Guys, if they beat us with Rodri, a CDM playing at striker, nah, that was never gonna happen. Do you know what? We don't really have any depth for the winger position, so let's steal a winger from them. Oh, can you imagine Jeremy Doku on our bench? Well, you don't have to imagine it. We have stolen him. And of course, with the super team we've built, we're gonna keep winning more trophies. That's another Premier League. Trophy number nine. Make that 10. 11. Ah, oh, but no domestic cops. Winning a treble is gonna be difficult. We even lost this final. But we do have a another chance at winning the Champions League. This time, though, against Real Madrid. I mean, this is by far one of the craziest career mode teams we've ever assembled. Even the bench is just crazy. There's absolutely no way we're losing to Real Madrid. And there you go. Second Champions League in the bag. In the next four seasons, all we need is a treble. And I think the only thing that can stop us is the wheel. Except the first transfer offer from both Barcelona and Real Madrid. Madrid. Brilliant. That means two of our players are going to be heading. One to Barca and one to Madrid. And also this season, we're not allowed to make any other transfers. So we can't even replace them. Do you know what? Our team is so good that we don't need to worry about new signings coming in. I'm just hoping none of our big players get offers from Barca or Real Madrid. And there you go. First offer coming in for Barca. And I'm so glad it's Kieran Tierney. That is a bullet we've dodged. Now, all we got to do is avoid offers from Real Madrid. If we can survive the entire trust window. That would be insane. We're getting offers from other Spanish clubs like Real Sociedad, but so far, no Madrid. Ooh, Atletico Madrid. And again, Real Madrid have not made their move yet. We're almost a month in and zero offers from Madrid. We might be able to survive this. Oh, but finally, Madrid have come in with an offer for Judy and Timber. Funnily enough, it's a loan to buy deal, but whatever it is, we're just gonna have to accept. They want a two-year loan deal. They want to split the wages with us as well. We're going to pay 60% of his wages while he's chilling for Real Madrid. What is this kind of a deal? And a future fee of just 60 million. But as I said, we're accepting whatever comes from them. You know what's the good thing though? None of our first team players were impacted. We got lucky. And so the chase continues for the treble. Just as expected, we've bagged another Premier League title. Community Shield 2. That's 14 trophies. 15 with the FA Cup. Wait a minute. That does mean we're on course for the treble. We're also adding the UEFA Super 
Cup, so 16 trophies. The Champions League, if we can win this, that's the treble done. And we are in the final once again. We could complete two challenges by just winning this game. Wait, what? Did we just get Cook in the Champions League final? No! That means no treble this season and no third Champions League. Three seasons to get those objectives done. If the wheel could give us a bit of help to win the treble, it would be really nice. What on earth is this? Transform your midfield to having at least two French players? That's not nice. No, we've already got a midfield of Florian Burtz and Fete Valverde. I, I, I don't want to replace them. I mean, we're chasing a treble and the wheel is having us replace place two of our best players. I can't believe it. I mean, if we are being forced to add a French midfielder, why compromise? We're going with Eduardo Camavinga. And that's one French midfielder we've got in there with Camavinga. But we need another one. And I don't really want to replace Declan Rice or even Florian Words. Okay, I've got a bit of a crazy idea. I know we just got Haaland as a gift, but I don't really care too much about him. We can win the big trophies even without him. So I'm thinking, remember that formation we ran? And without a striker. Could we actually pull this off by bringing in another Frenchman? I think, yeah, that could really work. Can't believe we've shipped Holland back to Man City just so we can fit in an extra midfielder. But hey, that extra midfielder is going to be Warren Zaire Emery, one of PSG's brightest midfield prospects. Okay, we've completed the challenge from the wheel. A couple of Frenchmen in that midfield. But now we're going to be playing without a striker. But the last time we did so, we actually ended up winning the Champions League, if I'm not wrong. So, Words in that cam roll can work. We've got a 99 rated Saka. Time to see if this is the season we win the treble. Um, okay, no treble for us because we've lost the Champions League to Villarreal in the round of 16. Is it because we played without a striker? I mean, the ratings of our players look insane. Okay, if we look at the stats, we'll get to know more. Nah, we weren't shy of goals because Martinelli, Saka, Words as well, they all came through. And we even won the Premier League trophy number 17. Ah, but we lost the community shield. No FA Cup, but the Carabao Cup's in the bag. Trophy number 18. But yes, that means two more seasons. We need to win seven trophies and also complete a treble. The pressure is building up. Two challenges remain. What could they be? Oh, but looks like the wheel is not going to be helping us. The Arsenal board want to cash out, generate 200 million of player sales, and no transfers allowed this season. We just have a squad of 21 players, and we need to get rid of 200 million worth of players. That's going to be a big problem. And the fact that we can't even use any money this season and bring in new players, it's it's going to be tough. I think the game plan has to be just selling one of our big players and hoping that just generates all the money needed. And there are only three players that fit the bill. Saka, Wirtz, and Martinelli. Since we don't even have a striker, I can't afford to let go of Wirtz. But Martinelli, I think we could do without him. Why? Because we've got Jeremy Doku. I guess right now we don't have a choice, so I'm putting Martinelli on the transfer list. Can't believe we're having to say goodbye to a 95-rated Gabriel Martinelli, but he's off to Atletico Madrid, and we've generated the required 200 million. Okay, so Doku is going to play on the left for us. We've got a really thin squad, but we need to make it work. We need trophies this season. And no way with Martinelli gone, we've even lost the Premier League title. Thankfully, we did win the Community Shield, so we're up to 19 trophies, but we didn't win any of the domestic cups. Champions League was a horror show. We're out in the round of 16. That literally means we can't get to 25 trophies now. Our squad was too thin to compete, man. But you know what? We can still win the treble and get super close to 25 trophies. I want to do that in the final season. We're going to need to make signings. All depends on what the final challenge is going to be. North London heist. Steal a player from Spurs. Boy, do we need that right now. All right, let's see who we can steal from Spurs. Ryan Checky is a good one. Oh, Facundo Farias. If I'm not wrong, he plays for Inter Miami in real life. Look at him now. 85 rated. I can't see anyone outrageous here. Ah, they don't really have a great squad. All we can get is players for squad depth, I guess. Oh, wow. And if you look, we've barely got any depth for the defense. So I guess that's where we need a player. We're stealing Fran Garcia from them. 85 rated left back. We need that. The 
good thing is we've also got 286 million to make two more signings. And we got to make them count, boys. Let's see how we can improve this team. To start with, we're bringing in the Portuguese centre-back Antonio Silva. Now, that's an upgrade. Him and Saliba, I think, could win us the Champions League. Also, I think we could do with the right back because Ben White is 34 years old. And we can't go wrong with probably the world's best right back right now, Jeremiah Frimpong. And so for the final season, we reinforced our team. It's crazy that we're going to end up not having a striker for the last few seasons. But I believe in words and soccer. Let's see if we can get that treble. Okay, for the final season, we've had the perfect start winning the Premier League. Trophy number 20. Look at how tight it was. Goal difference got us the title. And the fact that we didn't even have a striker. Oh, no FA Cup. No, we lost the Carabao Cup. The treble is gone. I can't believe it. Of course, we weren't even in the community shield. What did we do in the Champions League? We topped our group. Threw against Monaco. Against Salzburg as well. Oh, and we knocked out Juve. We're in the finals. Although we can't win the treble, what we can do is win our third Champions League with Arsenal. Complete our third challenge. Look at the stats of the likes of Saka, Wurtz and all. We deserve this. Come on, can we get Champions League number three for Arsenal, please? Yes, we can. 99 rated Saka gets us the winner. And so in 10 seasons, we've got Arsenal three Champions Leagues, 21 trophies. Unfortunately, no treble. It shows how difficult it is to win a treble. But yeah, I think we had a good run of getting Arsenal back to their glory days. But hey, if you enjoyed this video, watch me spend 10 years of managing Man United. <sighs> that video almost made me bald. Click here to watch that.